pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you everyone. I'd like to invite uh, our county executive, Pat Ryan, up for a few words. All right, good evening, everyone. I know it's a beautiful night, and I really appreciate everybody taking the time to be here. Um, I will be very brief, because the whole point here is not for me or other elected officials to talk, but for us to listen, really only listen to help elevate your voices. Because talking to some of you, uh, sitting down and coming in, I think what we all feel right now is, frankly, that it's absolutely ridiculous that we even have to be here doing this whatsoever. But, but it's also important that we recognize if we don't take the action as individuals, and I, again, I appreciate you all being willing to give up your time, to document what's happening with detail and with humanity of actually telling the personal stories of the pressure and the stress that this is putting on so many people, if we don't do that, we know that this big company, uh, which is now owned by an, a global hedge fund, is not going to listen. We've seen how they've reacted in sort of the way that they claim it's supposed to work and it's not working. So I just want to thank my colleague Sandra Hinchy and Assemblyman Cahill for being Woo here, our staff. We have gotten our office, and I'm sure you all are the same, thousands of really heartbreaking calls from people here and a lot of other people who I know couldn't be here of bank accounts being empty from auto, auto pay that they didn't even know they were signed up for. Small business owners getting $10,000, $20,000, $30,000 bills when they normally get one or $2,000 bills. This goes far beyond global supply chain increases, which everybody's dealing with. This is a fundamental failure to implement their new technology system that has meant all of us, myself included as a Central Austin customer, are paying the price, having to basically put our money up for their mistakes. So you're gonna hear more about the process, but I, what I just wanna really emphasize, I know this meeting can feel sometimes like you're screaming into the void and is this going to help? But it really does help. I'm telling you as an elected official, your voices are way more powerful than ours to bring your stories to the State Public Service Commission, to the, the governor of the state, and ultimately uh, to Central Hudson. So I just, again, I wanna thank you. Um, and I think at the end of the day, uh, what I'd ask everybody to think about is kind of this idea of trust. Um, I feel that Central Hudson, through their failures to communicate and to execute, have broken that fundamental trust. And it's on them. It is on them to restore that trust, but the only way we can work towards that is with transparency and accountability and you all sharing your stories. So thank you again, um, and uh, I'm gonna uh, invite up my colleague, Senator Hinchy, to share uh, what her office is also uh, doing and how they've been helping. So please welcome Senator Michelle Hinchy. Thank you everyone uh, so much uh, for being here. I echo all of the sentiments um, from our county executive. And I wanna say this is really a great turnout on such a great night. Uh, and you know, often we feel, especially after news like yesterday, not to politicize, but there's just, we're being hit with things from all directions. Uh, and the last thing we need is our utility company that provides us a necessity uh, that we pay for to basically totally go off the rails uh, and not be able to do their job. Uh, and then put all of us and all of you and all of our community members and all of our businesses in positions that uh, they all, we all, you all cannot get out of. Uh, so similar to the county executive, we have had um, massive amounts of outreach, both via uh, phone calls and emails. And I wanna take a moment to and thank uh, publicly Tyrone Wilson, our Ulster County uh, 
Human Rights Commissioner, because thank you, there you are, because uh, over the summer, uh, he was actually the first person to bring this issue to our attention. And uh, in working with him and because of those conversations, we actually put forth legislation that will ban all utility companies across the state from using any type of estimated billing system. Because this is a failed system, people should pay what they owe, not what companies expect, think, or want you to owe. Uh, you should pay what you owe. You should be able to budget. Uh, even if they are reimbursed, it doesn't matter because it, we all know we're all living on budgets and fixed incomes here. And so we have to make sure that we are stopping that practice. Uh, now that the budget's over, that is a priority of ours to move forward in the last few weeks of session. Uh, so call us, call your legislators, call your friends, tell them to call their legislators to get that bill passed called leadership uh, because that will be, uh, that is a really important step in fixing this uh, for the future. But uh, right now we are here to talk about what's happening now. And let's talk about what's happening today. And I want to thank you, County Executive and Assemblyman Cahill, for uh, convening this with uh, me in my office because this is incredibly important. Uh, there is nowhere else I think any of us would want to be other than listening to your stories, your experiences, so that way we can work in partnership with you to elevate them, to collect them, and to make sure that the PSC really sees how big of an issue this is. And not just so they pay attention to Con Edison, because they have to deal with them too from the city, but they need to pay attention to what's happening right here in the Hudson Valley. Uh, so thank you all for being here. Uh, thank you for making your voices heard, for spending your time with us, as the county executive said, uh, because it is really <laughs> worth it, and together we will make a difference in this space. So thank you all so much. <laughs> it is now my pleasure uh, to introduce Assemblyman Cahill to come up. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's great when this community gets together for good things, which we do frequently. It's unfortunate when we have to get together because so many people are in distress. And you heard my colleagues just tell you that they've had people contact their office in unprecedented numbers. I wish I could say this was unprecedented, but until today, uh, you have not yet exceeded the number of people who called our office having troubles with unemployment at the beginning of the pandemic. But in just about two or three days, we're pretty sure you will exceed that number. The number of people having trouble with Central Hudson for one reason or another, and there are several reasons that people are having issues, uh, are growing by leaps and bounds. We already have fielded over 550 individual complaints in our office. We circulated a document to as many communities as we could, and they are being returned in droves every day with people telling their story, and it is our intention working with great advocates like the Public Utility Law Project, working with advocates like our county executive, like our great state senator, to put that information in front of the Public Service Commission where it can do some good. We want to make sure your voices are heard. And today is one of those opportunities to make that happen as we've had before. Last week I conducted a different uh, gathering on Zoom with colleagues from the assembly where uh, we took information to tell people what they can do to help what they can do to help themselves. Uh, right now, if you find yourself in a position where you cannot afford to pay your utility bill, we were advised by an expert advocate in the field, pay something, something. You don't have to pay the whole thing if you can't, pay something. And keep paying something, a little bit, as much as you can along the way uh, until you get to that position where your bill is either straightened out or they can, uh, or, or, or it's cleared up one way or another. Uh, what else can you do? You can call Central Hudson. And I know there's a lot of trouble getting through because, yeah, right. Right, because after you do that, then you call us. And you say, we couldn't get through. Well, we'll try to get through for you. If you can't get through yourself, you can count on our office to spend the rest of the day trying to get through on your behalf. We want your voices heard. So we have problems with billing. We have problems with reliability. I don't know about you, but my power has been out more in the last four months than it's been out in the last 12 years. We have problems with the cost of the, the energy that they're selling us. And Central Hudson, on their own website, will say, oh, our hands are tied, we have to pay market rate, and then we pass that on to our customers at no markup. Well, you tell me why Fred Costello, the supervisor of Sorgates, was able to buy electricity cheaper than Central Hudson was. Why was he able to plan ahead more 
than the company that's been in business selling electricity for 100 years. That's because Central Hudson doesn't care enough about you. They care, they care about their shareholders worldwide, headquartered in Western Canada, because they were taken over by an international conglomerate that we fought in this community to keep from happening several years ago. So we want the Public Service Commission to review the activities of Central Hudson. And while they will take their big money advocates to go up and tell their story, we will make sure that those voices are drowned out by your voices. So that's part one of what this is about. Part two of what this is about is getting you some help. Call us, call the Public Service Commission. We have that information available if you need. Our phone number in our office is 338-9610. And it works most of the time, except when the power goes out. But we will make sure that we follow up with you. Uh, tonight, you're going to give us more information that we need. We need that information to go up there and advocate on your behalf. And rest assured, every single comment that is made tonight is being recorded by our staffs, three of us, and will be transmitted along with the over 550 comments that our office has already received, and the thousands that Pat Ryan's office has received, and the thousands that Michelle Hitchie's office has received. So with that, I'm using up your time, and I don't want to do that because we're going to be here for a while, but we'll be in the back and our staffs will be in the back and we'll be listening and recording everything and, and moving forward. So with that, I wanna uh, turn it back to our host and he's going to uh, give you the, the rest of the night and how you're gonna proceed. Thank you so much. Again, thank you very much to our elected officials for putting this together and for being here. Thank you to Kingston High School for hosting the public hearing. Good evening. My name is Mark Cazapoli. I'm the Ulster County Director of Veteran Services. Uh, this evening I'll be your moderator. Thank you for coming to this public hearing on Central Hudson's customer service information system implementation and resulting billing errors. Public comments made tonight will be submitted to the Department of Public Service to be included on matter 22-00666 for the Public Service Commission investigation. We will be calling four names at a time. Two names to come to the microphones and two individuals to be ready to speak next. Please listen carefully for your name to be called. You'll hear it twice. If you have a mobility issue and are unable to come to the microphone, when your name is called, please raise your hand. Someone will come to you with the microphone. The microphone to my right will speak first. When we begin, please state your name and town residence. A reminder, this event is being live streamed and we are recording in order to ensure accuracy of your comment. So please speak as clearly into the microphone as possible. You'll have two minutes to make your comment and will receive a 30 second warning when your time is almost up. Please respect the time limit as we have many individuals here tonight. Please begin your comment by providing your full name again and your town of record. If you're unable to submit your full comment in the time frame allotted, I will ask you to meet with a staff member who will come to the microphone and they will take you out to the back, uh, into the lobby, and we will ensure that your full comment is submitted. So again, at the two minute mark, if you're going over, I am gonna ask you to please just depart with one of our, one of our people here who will then allow you to finish your comment and capture it all so we can all go towards the investigation. If you're unable to stay for the entire event and do not have an opportunity to speak, we will note that on our sign-in sheet and call you tomorrow to take your statement and submit it to the matter portal. Finally, we also have staff available uh, who will, from the senator and the assembly member uh, that are here for any additional assistance you may need. All right, again, thank you for attending. We're gonna now begin. So I'm gonna call four names up. I ask that two go to one microphone, two go to the other. Jess Mullen, Dave Amato,
Tamara Lonegran, and George Herbst. Hi, um, my name is Jess Mullen. I live in Kingston, and I'm the executive director of Communities for Local Power. Communities for Local Power, uh, also known as CLP, um, uh, is formerly known as Citizens for Local Power. We've been advocating for residents on utility and rate case, uh, rate case issues since 2012. With the recent investigations into Central Hudson underway, the expiration of the moratorium to prevent electricity shutoffs, CLP is pushing for two things. One, forgiveness of electric bill debts with Central Hudson, not ratepayers, picking up the bill. And two, stopping the Central Hudson delivery rate increases scheduled and approved for July. Yes, you heard that right. Central Hudson has a Public Service Commission approved rate increase coming to all of us this July. Our first demand on this issue tonight is to have energy bill debt forgiven and for Central Hudson to share the cost. More than 48,000 residential customers in the Central Hudson Service Territory face power shutoffs. Central Hudson is under investigation for their billing practices, rate hikes, and the handling of the winter storm that led to power outages in February 2022. Meanwhile, their profit margin has not been affected and shareholder dividends have actually increased. We aren't alone either. New York State is in the middle of an energy crisis. According to the Public Utility Law Project, New York residential customers alone owe one point, uh, over $1.7 billion in unpaid bills to utilities, and businesses owe another $600 million. We need our state uh, state legislator, uh, state leaders. We need our state leaders to take action. We're calling on Governor Hochul, the New York State Legislature, and the Public Service Commission to make for profit utilities pay for second time debt relief. Our second demand on this issue tonight is stopping the Central Hudson rate hike, scheduled and approved for this July. If you're outraged and you have, uh, we have actions that you can take after you submitted your complaint to the PSC. Please join us May 13th for our Make Shareholders Pay uh, community event here in Kingston. We'll have information about it on our website. The information's in the flyer. Additionally, we have a petition that okay, you can sign. Yeah. Time is up, thank you very stop much. Stop the rate hike. Before we move on to our next uh, public testimony, I'm going to ask that we have our Public Utility Law Project, our pulp, Lori Wheelock, come on up just to say a few words. Good evening, everyone. My name is Lori Wheelock. I'm the Deputy Director for the Public Utility Law Project. We go by Pulp for short. We're a 40-year-old nonprofit organization that educates, advocates, and litigates on behalf of New York's low-income utility customers. We wear many hats, one of which is we become parties to all the rate cases. So when Central Hudson filed last year for a rate increase, we entered as a party. We submitted testimony, we shared stories, and we fought to decrease their rates prevent them from being increased, but we're unsuccessful. We also do direct services, just like legal aid. We've helped people all across Central Hudson's territory starting last summer. It was right around this time last year where we got our first calls from customers who said, we don't understand why our bills are going up. We have internal protocols, just like every other law firm does, where we go through and we look at evidence, and we try to determine what's going on. We couldn't tell what was happening. We had the company go out and investigate meters. We had shared meter investigations. We looked at bills. We spent hours trying to help people figure out what was going on, and we could not understand what was happening. Fast forward to this last fall and winter where we started to get a significant increase in the number of calls and people calling frantically because they were having issues, many of which you'll hear tonight, but were shocking people having bills and thousands of dollars being deducted without notice from their bank accounts, people getting multiple bills every single month for the same amount of time. None of it was making sense. And then it came to light that Central Hudson was switching over to a new computer system that was affecting their billing. At the same time, we all got slammed with increased cost of energy. 
Our organization does not believe that the cost was just passed on. We feel that companies like Central Hudson should have hedged, should have looked ahead when the federal government said back in October that rates were gonna go up, and they did not communicate. Putting something on a website is not communicating with their customers. The frustration is palpable, and that's why events like this are important. Because of everything that we've heard thus far, there are three investigations into the company right now in front of the Department of Public Service. The record tonight is important. The first case looks into what their response was with Winter Storm Landon. This has nothing to do with the people on the ground, but with the higher ups who made the decisions of when to call for help and when, which parts of the districts were gonna be taken care of first. The second investigation is an audit into their billing practices. And the third case is what this record will help with tonight is about all the billing issues. The department needs to hear from you. They need to see the evidence from your bills of exactly what you all have gone through, what we have heard, all the people we've tried to help, because that will lead to results. So what, what else you know, can people do? Share your stories tonight, it'll go in the record. Get your neighbors and family members to do the same. You can put the comments into writing. I can help you with that process. As of 10 a.m. this morning, there were over 3,000 written complaints in the case record, of which your stories will be added to. In a few months after the department has investigated, there will be a report. That report, groups like ours will look at from the public point of view and make sure that there are things in there and protections that the public deserves. There should be no late fees, there should be no terminations, there should be penalties on the company, and there should be recourse, all of which are items that we will look for. But again, we need your stories to show the state how deep this problem is. So thank you all for being here tonight. My testimony is a lot longer, um, but I'm gonna stop and just submit it into the record. We look forward to hearing from you. Our organization is also available if you still have specific issues. If you feel in your gut that your bill is still wrong, you have the right to fight it by also filing a complaint against Central Hudson for your specific billing issues. So our organization can help with that as well as all the elected officials groups here tonight because you have the right to make sure that your bills are, on, are accurate. You have the right to know what you're paying when and you have the right to control that billing process under the public service law. So thank you all for having me. Thank you for everything that you'll say tonight. And I'm gonna submit my record into the testimony and then listen to all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm gonna call up Allison Fryman to also come to the microphone on my right. And I'm gonna ask the microphone on my right to speak. So please state your name and your town. My name is Tamara Lonergan. I'm from Ulster Park, New York. I own Thunder Horse Hollow Farm, which is a horse and emu farm, and we also grow crops in, in Ulster Park. Um, around January, my story is super long, so I won't bore you with all of it, just the sensational parts. Around January, I got my bill from Central Hudson, and it was for $3,000. I didn't understand why was it for $3,000 because we don't run incubators, we're, we're running a few little buckets and things for the horses in the barn to have water, keep it from freezing, and for the emu. So I called Central Hudson and they told me that there was a, a lot of various charges uh, where it had gone up from 3,000 to 10,000 to 9,000 and I couldn't understand what they were talking about. They began to use techniques of psychological first aid on me, and I knew they were because I was one of the first 25 in the country to be trained in that for medical reasons, because I'm a nurse. They're telling me, Miss Kimara, calm down, go outside, take a deep breath, but they weren't discussing my concerns. One lady's telling me about her chickens. So I never got anywhere with them. The next month, my bill is 6,000. I'm sending them three, four hundred a month just trying to pay something, right? The next bill, it's, it's three, six, nine thousand. So Easter comes, and I don't want to tell anybody that, you know, I'm embarrassed, I'm 63, worried, what is my bill, right? I call on Easter, call in, $16,000 is what they tell me on the phone. And I'm going to be truthful with you people. I became suicidal because I can't pay that bill. I'm going to lose my farm. 
I can't get any of them on the phone. I can't resolve this. I can't even come up with a payment plan. I don't owe them $16,000. So quickly, I'm speaking for small farmers in our county. We're all in the same boat. You're gonna lose the farms here if we do not get some resolution for all of us. Well, thank you very much for that. If you have further testimony, please, someone will take it at this point. Emma is coming down if you'd like to speak with her. A microphone to my left, please. Hello, uh, David Amato. Um, I own Old Savannah, Kingston, down on the Roundout Landing. Um, I would first like to thank the linemen and the frontline workers uh, there in Ice Storm. This isn't about them. This is about Central Hudson's predatory billing practices. Um, on or about February 22nd, I opened my bill and it was $9,800. Um, you know, I have a restaurant, so I do have a large Central Hudson bill, but it averages around 4,500, it had doubled. Um, so I said to myself, these guys can't really be trying to recoup from the ice storm already. Um, later that day, the Daily Freeman, there's a post that Central Hudson put out a press release that there's a 46% increase. Central Hudson didn't know prior to the day that I got my bill that there was going to be an increase. Um, you know, uh, I'm fortunate that I'm able to pay the bill, you know, not happily. Um, and, uh, so later on, maybe a week later, I had just opened the ice skating rink on the round out. So I had a new service put in, in December. I get the bill for that, $6,700. 30 second warning. They hadn't even read the meter once and sent me a bill for 6,700. Pat Ryan had put me in touch with somebody at Central Hudson and they read the meter it was only 1,200. Said so I pay the bill, then I get two more bills for the ice rink for 3,500 each. Now, on their website, they went and cor corrected the bill, even though they didn't read the meter, and said that uh, January was 700 and some dollars, uh, February to add up to the amount of $1,200. So they're, how did, they never read the meter. How, how are they estimating when they didn't read the meter? To me, they're covering their tracks because there's obviously an investigation going on. Thank, thank you, sir. Uh, thank two you. minutes is up. If you have any further testimony, please. Okay. Before we get started, I, I call up Rick May and Al Tietzel. Please just get on deck to, uh, to the microphones, please. And I'm going to ask testimony on my right. Hi, my name is Allison Freeman, and I live in Gartner. Uh, I'd first like to thank you for holding this public hearing. In the last two years, I've installed Mitsubishi mini splits in my home, and my kilowatt usage has been cut in half. However, every month, every other month, Central Hudson estimates my usage based on historical inaccurate data, which is often double my actual kilowatt usage for the month, and I need to call them, wait on hold for hours, and then very likely get disconnected anyway. At some point over a year ago, a supervisor gave me an email to send a picture of my meter and a schedule of the estimated meter reading dates. But unfortunately, the employees at Central Hudson never look at the emails, so I was still receiving the estimated bills, and I would have to call and go through the same merry-go-round to have someone reverse it. In fact, one month, a Central Hudson employee reversed my bill, and then another employee reversed it again, and the second invoice was for an additional $10 within the same month. I tried to explain what happened to Poughkeepsie, but they could not understand and I gave up. It was $10 and it wasn't worth my time. Another incident from January 2022 to February 2022, in one month, my electric supply costs on my invoice increased from nine cents to 22 and a half cents per kilowatt hour, over 125%. After emailing them on the app about it, calling Poughkeepsie directly and calling Kevin Cahill's office multiple times, on 324-22, a supervisor called me. I was shocked. She told me she was going to email someone right away and have that bill adjusted. As you can guess, that never happened, and I finally had to pay the full bill anyway. In addition, trying to, second one. 
In addition, trying to change some of my usage to solar through common energy, which is something Central Hudson promotes, has been an absolute debacle. From February 2021 to January 2022, a whole year, Common Energy was trying to get Central Hudson to attach my account to my Common Energy account, but to no avail. As of this morning, I have an approximately a $2,000 credit, which is good, on my Central Hudson account as they try by their ridiculous multiple reversals to resolve those bills and the Common Energy credits. The incompetence of Central Hudson is beyond compare, and if they were not a monopolistic utility, they would be out of business. Right, thank you for your time. Good evening, my name is George Hurst, 25 Park Drive, Woodstock, New York. And uh, I'd just like to say uh, this has been an ongoing situation for three or four months for us. Um, we received no bills, I got suspicious, I called up. Um, you can't get through to them for one thing. The next thing was is uh, my wife finally got through to them and they said, well, we'll be sending you a bill shortly. They never sent the bill. Unfortunately for us, they do have access to our checking account because we did auto deduct. So I have to cancel that now because uh, I, I don't want to wind up with this bill for three, four, five thousand dollars. You know, I'm a senior on a fixed income, so who knows? You know, it's like you're in the dark. Nobody really knows, you know. And uh, just like the lady before me said, I, I'm involved with a solar farm that's attached to uh, Central Hudson. And uh, I was before all this, um, I was getting double bills. And I was like, where's the savings through the solar farm? And, and, you know, and I found out that Central Hudson was not giving the solar farm the information they needed to process my bill. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's basically all I have to say. Give somebody else the rest of my minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. But, uh, before you get started, sir, let me call two more people. Linda Geary and Tom Pfeiffer. Or Pfeiffer. Yes, my name is Rick May. I live in the hamlet of Walkill, New York. Um, I won't add to the tale of woes that I've already heard because my problems are not. Talk closer to the mic, please. Can we talk her to the mic? The curse of being tall. Is that better? Don't hold this against my two minutes, I hope. Thank you. Again, Rick May, Hamlet of Walk Hill, um, won't add to the horrific stories. Mine don't even compare to some of the ones I've heard. But I do come with an awful lot of questions for tonight. One of them, why did I receive the notice of this meeting just a day before the meeting was held? Why is the federal government not involved when we have Canadian ownership. This has become an international corporate matter. And why is there not a US representative as part of this? Why are we allowing monopolistic control of our power supply? Yeah. And especially, why are we allowing monopolistic control without any transparency whatsoever in terms of what is going on with how we are being built. I have requested Central Hudson to come to my house and examine my meter. The meter is the only way I know of what I'm supposed to owe these people. I've been informed that there's a $100 charge to come and examine my meter. 30 seconds. So I, I find myself asking questions about where is the oversight if, we, if we're granting monopolistic control of our power supply to an entity such as Central Hudson, why is there not better and more effective oversight of this company? Where has the PSC been? And why is this the first meeting I've been invited to attend, especially when elderly people on fixed incomes are trying to pay bills, perhaps in a confused state, thinking that they owe this monopoly hundreds if not thousands Under, of dollars. Understood, sir. You have many valid questions. I'll ask uh, Wendy from Senator Hinchy's office if you'd like to just go further with the Senator's staff and sure. uh, get your questions addressed. Thank you. Thank you. Can I start? Okay. Uh, 
My checking account was overdrawn about $1,800 on an automatic charge on the 25th of March. I knew I was overdrawn by looking at my computer at the house, so I went right down to the bank. I rescinded that payment, which was returned. Next day, I went back to the bank and made all stop payments coming from Central Austin to my checking account, so they can't come to my checking account. And it's very odd that on a budget billing program, usually you, you, you review it every six months. I haven't done it in two years. I've all, always questioned that. Yesterday I called. This is going on March, March 26th. I was on hold for 22 minutes. Second call, 10 minutes. Third call, 15 minutes. One time I had to talk to a supervisor and the questions I asked was not a supervisor at all. Also, on February 4th, they had $6,090 manual credit back billing. February 4th, $5,945 consumption billing. Again, I asked them on several occasions how they arrived at those figures. I'm entitled to it. So what's happening now with me, I sent another email to uh, Central Hudson and I got a reply. Someone will get a hold of you, uh, get back to you in the next three to five days. That was three weeks ago, okay? I just got a, uh, a one today dated uh, April 11th. I got it about three or four days ago. And they're still trying to- second warning, sir. Okay. They're still trying to charge me that, that large figure. And if I don't pay it, they're gonna charge me $20 for each time to check. The letter tells them I stopped the automatic payment. No one is reading my letter. Especially when I go down there to talk to somebody at Central Hospital, I get stopped by the security guard. I can't even get onto the darn lot. I wanted to just talk to him. So this is really bad. So my whole package is going to go to the public officials. Do this uh, probably next week. Get everything set up. Thank you. All right, thank you. Before we start with the next, uh, Virginia Casper and Pat Pelicano, please come to the microphones. Sir, go ahead. Good evening, I'm Tom Pfeffer from Kingston, and this is regarding the East Union Street Firehouse, where we keep the thermostat at 50 degrees. The graph on my Central Hudson bill shows it's almost flatlined last year until it gets to September, and then it shows 9997, 9987 units of gas used in that month, which comes down to $310 a day. I looked at my bill and it gets a present reading and a, and a previous reading. And I have the numbers and you do the math and it comes out to 180 units. Their math, they get 10,180 units. So it, the additional 10,000 units that they added onto my bill because of some accounting error, some uh, computer error, uh, totaled uh, $4,100 $4, of delivery charges and $4,600 of supply charges. I know it's not right, I've been there many years, and you'd think this would be a simple thing to call a fix by making some calls. Uh, I've, I've sent in my meter readings, I've sent in uh, notes with my partial bills paid, but it's, it's so simplistic, but it's so incredibly uh, troubling because it hasn't been fixed. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Linda Geary Gardner. I am not here to talk about my particular bill, but we are in one big mess. We're in a big mess because this entire state is taking an aggressive stand towards moving off of fossil fuels and transmitting our energy from solar and wind and hydro and saving the planet. And all of that is coming through our electrical systems. <laughs> if they can't handle the transfer from one major corporation to come in and set up the computer system so that this mess doesn't happen, we are in big, big trouble. I mean, the state has put out a huge plan. Um, the governor and, uh, you know, this is like a years in, in, in the making, right? So we've got the Climate Action Council and they are doing great things with this plan. And I'm working on it in my, my, my capacity and my job, but I don't work for the state, but I'm, I, I'm involved with it. So I see how deep this 800 page plan is. And it's deep. I mean, it's talking about deep stuff, but all of it is about electrification. 
How are we going to handle getting off fossil fuels if this is the way our utilities are going to be run? PSC and Senator Hinchy and Assemblyman Cahill, you guys have got your hands full because this is an antiquated system beyond it. Morning. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Will uh, Suzanne Hellman and Salvatore Potenza please come up? Good evening. My name is Virginia Casper. I live in West Shelton. I want to start with a little context, which is I've learned that nationwide there's been an average of a 4% increase in uh, electric rates. In New York State, it's been 15%, the third highest in the country. And sure enough, um, I received the highest bill ever for the month of February, the only month this year when the house was completely empty. And again, the temperature at 50, like the gentleman before me. When I called Central Hudson, the customer service person spoke very quickly in telegraphic speech, making assumptions about my understanding of the billing terms, which require an education in electrical delivery to decipher. And I know that the the the, the um, how high the bills are is the main issue, but I also think that we have a right to reasonable customer service when we call and to have things explained in a way that are not gobbledygook. Through the media, through the media, I learned about three separate reasons for the doubling of my bill. One was the remediation of the ice storm. The other was the rising cost of fuel, which in fact. Um, is used to create almost half the electrical energy in the United States and the dysfunctional billing system. And I want to know which is it? Is it all of them? Is it some of them? Um, meanwhile, I rented solar panels that uh, began functioning more. in March, which I thought would protect me, but the new bill indicates that half of the $100 Central Hudson bill is delivery fees. If supply charges have risen for Central Hudson, why are our delivery charges going up? Most important for the policymakers in this room, the state has a role to play in advancing decarbonization through passing and funding of the CLCPA, CCIA, which is long for Climate Community and Leadership um, Act. Um, we need to bring public power to bring the full range of the state authority to bear towards a carbon-free energy grid. All Thank right. you. Thank you, ma'am. Hello, good evening. My name is Pat Pelicano. I live in Kingston, New York. Um, yeah, I thankfully didn't have any of these enormous bills, um, although some of these people, the amount that they were charged, that's, I don't have even that much money. I, if I, and I was on auto pay, so if they were to charge me six grand, I, that's all I have. And I don't think I'm alone to, when I imagine a lot of people have around that same amount, right? And instead, my billing scenario is like now I'm at, I had like a million emails last week where it was negative 2,000, which is like, that's nice, I like a credit, but then it was a billion of those emails. And I think the larger problem is like, this isn't just like, oh, they're transitioning to a, a new billing system, right? We're not going to get the kind of trust that we need. You know, um, County Exec Pat Ryan was talking about of restoring the trust. There's no trust to be restored. The CEO of Central Hudson makes $8 million. Like, they're, they're beholden to their board members. They're making a profit off of what is a basic utility. Can I live in my house with that heat and electricity? No, I have to have that or else I will die, right? Um, and so, yeah, for the policymakers, there's the Build Public Renewables Act. Like, we need um, to trans, like, to, to move into a different system um, because, yeah. Um, having that, yeah, public power, like we need the public ownership of these systems because we're not going to get any transparency from them. Um, we're not going to get transparency from Fortis, right? A, a Canadian conglomerate, as has been mentioned. Um, 30 seconds. Thank you. I saw this bumper sticker the other day that said, think globally, act locally. And this is the same scenario. You know, the reason our rates are going up is because there's gas wars around the entire world. California just made 100% of their like energy off of renewables yesterday. And it's just embarrassing that New York is dragging its feet. Meanwhile, FDR created the, NP, the New York Public, um, New York Power Authority, and we can transition to public energy. 
Um, also, the, there's an All Electric Buildings Act that I implore you both to uh, support. And All right, thank and, you very much. Thank you. Can I have Maria Sobrato and Clark Goodrich please come to the microphones? Sir, to my right. <clears throat> my name is Sal Potenza. I'm from Milton, New York. And first, I'd like to thank uh, Ulster County Executive Patrick Bryant for having this meeting. But I also agree with the gentleman who was up earlier that there should have been prior notification, at least earlier, so many more people could be here. Uh, I'm here because of these uh, increased costs to us on all energy, not just energy for electric. I'm also talking about if you drive a car. And people who live up here, all of you, how did you get to this meeting? We had to drive a car. When we look at the price of gas or diesel fuel, at what point will we be able to afford not even having a car? On the electric bills, uh, I always like to be proactive, so I always go online to find out where the cheapest rates are. And I dealt with uh, public power prior uh, to this time. Uh, my contract ran out. So when I went online to look for another cheap energy source, the only ones that were available to me were the ones that I believe come from either New York State or our county executives or someone. And you can see they're all green. And every one of these costs are over 200% higher than what I got when I was using public power. But when I went online, public power was, wasn't one of them. So I watch every day. You have to watch every day. And what happened was one day public power jumped up. And I grabbed public power and for the rate of 0 0.074 30 seconds. Okay. The what I am being charged, my bill was almost $1,000. That's because I was charged 1.1768. When you call Central Hudson, you have to have a lot of free time because all you get most of the time is listening to music, and then the person you do talk to, they don't understand the question. It's very simple. So we have a big problem. I don't see Central Hudson here, but Central Hudson's, uh, uh, the way they treat the customer, it's almost like they don't even want to hear from you. They put you on music, they'll drop you off automatically, and they will not call you back. Okay, and time then when you come back up, here, sir. and also look at your politicians and your public representatives, because I called them, and I get the same typical response, well, it was colder, uh, the whole Sir. world needs more energy, but what are we doing? We're shutting off our energy. We have to look, okay, everybody wants to have All clean right. energy. But Sir, if, I, if I can ask you to just- to Contact your politicians, because they are just as big of the problem we have today, All right, as Sir. well as Central Hudson. Thank you very much. Um, I was a babe in the woods until tonight, and so this is peanuts compared to what I've been hearing, but I did look very closely at the bills that did come. Couldn't look at them all because some are missing, and, and Central Hudson claims that they can't reproduce bills. So, um, But I have uh, uh, January through April of 2021 and also of 2022, which shows a pattern. And the main point is, I, I think their, their strategy is to, uh, when they estimate every other month, here's an example of a month where the price per kilowatt hour doubled. And so they way overestimated the kilowatt hours, so much so that the following month when they did the meter reader, in our case it's every other month, uh, they could only charge me 27. So they, I believe they, that was the strategy, you know, to, to, to overestimate the number of kilowatt hours in order to overcharge at the higher price. And the next year, I'm still waiting for the next bill, but they did almost the exact same thing. If they're gonna estimate, you'd think they would base it on an average monthly. In this case, way overestimated. We'll see what they do when the next bill comes in. I'll let you know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Jay Gorman and China Blue Wong, please come down to the microphones. And then the uh, microphone to my right, please. Start your testimony. Hi, my name is Maria Sobrato, and I really liked her chart because I have had a non-working meter since August of 2020. It has not worked. It's had eights all the way across. 
Thanks to you, Central Hudson, for letting me take pictures and submitting them to you so that you could adjust my bill. Okay? August of 2020 until April of 2022, all eight. I was billed estimated and actual. And when I called, they said every other month, estimated and actual. But yet, my meter's not working. It's never worked for two years. So how are they billing me? Just curious. Then, I've had trouble with Central Hudson since 2015 when they came with delivery charges that are often more than my actual usage. I called the Public Service Commission 2015. My senators, everybody, you can't do anything. This is a, it's not a, it's, it's a commodity. I said, well then why can't they turn off my heat in the winter? So, what I want is a public service commission to regulate the delivery charges so that they're under 5% based on actual usage. And I want this petition to be amended so that it's retroactive to the date that they started charging delivery. And I want everybody in this room to get their money back from all the illegal fraudulent delivery charges that Central Hudson has. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Malia Dumont and Cynthia Reed, please come to the microphones. Sir, you can start. Uh, Clark Goodrich, West Early. So first of all, this is not about the people that go ahead and fix the, the actual power lines. I think uh, I applaud the Central Hudson guys in my area. Closer to the mic, sir. I live in West Early, which was devastated. We had trees, wires, everywhere. And in less than two days, we had power, and I think that was pretty good. I've gone, I'm 70 years old, I've gone through a lot of power problems over the years. They did a good job, so I'll, I'll, those guys did a great job. All right, now the bad news. I, like thousands of others here, have not received a Central Hudson bill in six months. When we finally did get the bills, they were extremely confusing, as we saw here today, and it, this is it's totally unacceptable. Uh, I spent hours and hours trying to correct their errors, and uh, sometimes they said, all right, we got the problem documented, and four weeks later I call again and they say there's no record of the, of the error that I reported. Basically, I had uh, reported that they double billed me for the electric usage. 30 seconds. Okay. Uh, I've assumed the Central Hudson, the new billing system is knowing that it's been flawed. Next time, I want to talk to uh, unprecedented price surge and electric rates. 45, they said 45% increase. That was stated multiple times. Actually, it's a lot higher than that. My rate, if you compare February this year to February last year, went up 3.5 times for the electrical supply. That's not acceptable. That's not 45%, it's 3.5 times. So that's gotta get under control. All right. The time, other issue is, is why is our rate not the rate of National Grid in Albany did not increase at all. I mean, brother lives up in that area. His his bill did not increase. All right. Why Thank you, sir. Be? Time is up. Thank you. <laughs> William and Marion Ryan and Greg Buono, Buono, please come to the microphones. I'm going to start here on my right. Hi, I'm Jay Gorman, Lake Train. So between January and March, I was getting a new bill about every week, every other week. At the same time, I was getting reversed between the two of them. So I called them to find out what's going on. I'm like, don't pay anything right now. We're having problems with the bills. Middle of February, I get a bill. It's about $1,400. I'm like, okay, I haven't paid anything for a while. Could be, maybe. So I figure I'll pay something just to, you know, go for a while. April 7th, I get five bills the same day. <laughs> Due on May 4th, okay? 20 days later, I get a reversal of a couple hundred dollars. Didn't do anything. Today I look, and two days ago, I get four more bills. But I go find out that they changed the e-bills. 
I'm not getting bills anymore. They automatically change my email. So how do you go and change that? And when I asked them about it, they're like, oh, we have no idea what's going on. Don't pay anything right now. We're gonna try to straighten it out. I was also told that they need to do an actual reading once a year. That per law, once a year they have to do a reading. So my question, why is every one of my bills estimated? Uh, we can give you an estimated bill 11 times a year. The 12th month is when we get a, a real one. In addition to me, my daughter's been trying to open up a small business in Port Ewan. She turned service on, on March 29th as a new business. She gave them a deposit they required. She gets a bill for a month later now. She's not even in there yet. She has a couple of lights going on. She has a bill with an estimated start bill and an estimated end re reading. How can a new business going into a spot get estimated bills for a start end? There was a business in before there, so she's seconds. probably getting charges on a company. When I call them about that, they're like, we can't really do anything about that. She just has to pay that. So. Thank you very much, sir. Hi, my name is Cynthia Reed, and I live in Beale Street in Kingston. And uh, again, my story isn't nearly as bad as some of them here. Closer to the mic, please. My story isn't nearly as bad as some of the people here, but there are some practices that maybe you're not aware of that we were informed of by an, an actual employee of Central Hudson. We moved to Kingston in July from Hopewell Junction, and where our bills were not nearly as bad, with a, an 1,800 square foot house with a finished basement sitting on a windy hill off the Taconic. We moved to a 1,400 square foot apartment on a Beale Street, who the previous tenants told us the most they ever paid in five years during a wicked winter was $300. The first bill in July that we moved in was fairly reasonable at $150, but the following bill was $780, estimated. They told us, oh, we're basing it on what the previous uh, bills were for last year. It's like, but it's totally different. This is rental unit, completely different people. There were four people in that apartment and they didn't pay that much. Long story short, going over and over and over again with Central Hudson, finally getting supervisors off and on. The first supervisor told me in uh, August that they knew full well that the system was malfunctioning. And I will fix this for you right away. She did. The second time it happened, I couldn't even get through to a supervisor. I got repeated idiots at call centers. They had now outsourced all their calls to call centers because I'm sure everybody was calling in. 30 seconds. Long story short, again, I screamed, ranted, rage, went absolutely psychotic on them over the phone, uh, made a lot of threats. They finally sent someone out that they were gonna charge me $30 to read the meter, not $100, by the way, $30 in Kingston. I guess we get a deal. Um, the person they sent out showed us how to read the meter, and then that person stood there an hour and a half telling us how disgusted a lot of the Central Hudson employees were that when they read meters, it is never entered in the system. Thank you, ma'am. Ever. Time is up. Thank, Thank you. you. Ever. It's never entered. I'm Aaliyah Dumont, I live in Kingston. Even before this uh, current um, problem started, I think energy prices were way too high here. I, I moved in the Hudson Valley in uh, 2017 and my energy bills um, were double what they'd been anywhere else I ever lived before. Um, but I just wanna give you some examples of how I personally have experienced this current problem. Um, so I, well, I live a, alone, I live a simple life, I don't have a television, I don't have a microwave, I don't have like a lot of energy sucking appliances, right? So I, I keep my energy usage pretty low um, and it's been very um, affordable until this year. I didn't get a bill in January, I didn't get a bill in February, but on March 11th, I got a bill for over $400, which was also reversed that same day and also on March 11th, that same day, I got an additional bill for uh, $560. So I don't know why I got a bill first for $430 reversed and then $560 on the same day. Um, that was very strange. Exactly one week later, I got another bill for over $800. And so of course I reached out to Central Hudson, what, you know, what is going on here? This can't possibly be true. I, you know, I, I barely use any appliances. I have very, very low energy usage um, and n no response, um, pretty much. Uh, they finally got back to me and, and said, um, well, why don't you send us a picture of your meter, which I did. 
which they then said they didn't get. So I sent it to them again, and this morning um, I got the, the oh-so-unhelpful response that energy prices have risen and they're just passing it along, which is not the case. That can't explain over $1,400 of billing in one month. Thank you. Thank you. Judith Van Etten and Ken Darmstadt. I am to the point where uh, you've handwritten in your names, so please forgive me if I mispronounce. Um, I'll do my best to sound it out a couple different ways. Uh, William Ryan, uh, my wife and I live in Haynes Falls. Uh, we're both retired. Uh, we have children and family spread throughout the country, so we travel a lot. Home is vacant uh, for months at a time. Uh, we had no problem until the spring of 2021. Um, April of 2021, we got a bill that was about five times the normal. And for the month of April, the house was completely vacant. Uh, from there, the billing issues got even more difficult to understand. And you've heard it all before. Dates were confusing. Overpayment credits came and went. Electrical usage no longer matched billed amount and so on. Some of the more egregious uh, issues that we've had. The issue of actual meter readings versus estimated meter readings is Central Hudson's default position for explaining billing discrepancies. Their policy is to conduct an actual reading every other month. They'll tell you that the billing simply needs to catch up with itself, and next month when they get their actual reading, it'll all reconcile. Several years ago, they, re they read the meter every two months, and every two months we would get an invoice based on that actual reading. Then they changed their policy to billing every month, but one month the bill would be based on an actual and the next month would be based on an estimated. We have invoices that show seven straight months of estimated readings. As part of reaching out to Central Hudson for explanations, they agreed to send us an updated invoice as perhaps that would help us understand what's going on. Well, the updated invoice came and all seven seconds. previous months with estimated readings had somehow morphed into actual readings. We received invoices that showed two meter readings in September of 2020, both different readings. One actual, one was estimated. Then we had estimated readings in October, December, and January, but no reading whatsoever in November. Uh, this just you know, goes on and on. On several occasions, we've reached out to Central Hudson, endured the endless hold times, Endlessly repeated Central Hudson commercials while on hold. Multiple switching as no one ever sir. seems to be the person that we need to talk to. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I call up Joe Latini or Latazzini. And to my right, please. Yes, my name is China Blue Wong and I live in Lake Katrine. And it's clear that uh, Central Hudson is completely broken and we need to replace them with something, a service that provides us with what we need. Um, I'm here to talk about, thank you, I'm here to talk about the fact that I, I, I use a modest amount of electricity. I, I um, last, a year ago, last March, I used 220 kilowatt hours for the whole month. And that's my, that was my average throughout the year, 200, 300, something in that range. It's really light. Um, so come around this March, when after receiving a number of quite large bills in December and November, I decided to see what would happen if I turned off all of my heat and just heated my house with wood. That was a really hard job, but I did it. Oh, my number of the amount of electricity I used in March was 2,000 kilowatt hours. <laughs> that anybody that's done math <laughs> is a multi multiply. That's it's. If you look at numbers, you know that there is an error in the number. It's not in the meter reading. It's on Central Hudson sides. They've got. Bad, either bad or maybe to their advantage, good algorithms that adjust it to their advantage. And in addition to the 2,000 kilowatt hour bill, um, they also sent me in retroactive bills from November, December, and Jan, no. 30 seconds. October, November, and December for $1,700 saying, oh, we didn't get it right. Uh, in the meantime, I did hire an electrician on my own expense 
to come and measure the power that I'm being drawn. I'm being drawn with everything on 11 kilowatt hours. 11. They are broken. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Certainly appreciate everyone's time and everyone's respect this evening. Thank you. Uh, part of the handwritten list, there are a lot of blank spots that you didn't say whether you wanted to speak or not, so I'm gonna go with the yeses first. And then at the end, if there are still some people who wish to speak, we could take you up at that, those times. But if it's blank, I'm not gonna be reading your name yet. Uh, hi, my name is Ken Darmstadt, and me and my daughter Renee, we own uh, Darmstadt Overhead Doors and Cornell Street Studios here in Kingston. And the reason why I'm here today is because I got a Central Hudson bill for $18,654. <clears throat> and doable in 20 days. And uh, for the same period last year, it was $4,991. They raised my demand rate from $11 a kilowatt hour, which is absurd, to $36 a kilowatt hour. So that's three times. I don't know what the PSC is doing, but that's three times the rate. It's time that the people take back this utility from the corporate people, and that's today. That's today. And we need action from our government officials today, because I hear stories going on and on and on, and nothing's happening. And that's, I, I was on the phone for three and a half hours today. I had, they had me on hold for three and a half hours, and then I called all other places, and we're, we, nothing's happening for the people. And it's time that the government of the people, by the people, for the people, happens. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Noel Damon, come to the microphone, please. Uh, my name is Greg Bono. Uh, I'm here because my bill went from $230 to $2,500. Uh, Upon receiving the bill, I called Central Hudson uh, customer service, I got the usual thing that everybody else did, explaining why and how it happened with uh, a language I didn't understand. Uh, upon speaking to the person, uh, she said, uh, okay, are you near a meter? So I said, yes, I went out and read the meter. She determined the meter reading and what I was charged was 10 times higher than the meter reading. Uh, upon doing that, uh, she said, we'll rebill you. I end up getting a bill with a $12 credit from owing $2,500. <laughs> so, uh, at that point, I got suspicious. So I called the Department of Public Service and got a lot of, uh, of help from the, uh, the Department of Public Service. They intervened and got me a direct uh, line with, with Central Hudson, uh, like everybody else. I couldn't get in there. I kept getting put off. Um, through their help, uh, I was able to speak to someone in their process, you have to speak to somebody in authority beyond customer service. They hooked me up with that person. They did resolve my situation. It's actually, in truth, $275, and the person from Central Hudson credited me for $100, so it's actually $175. But uh, again, uh, there was a $12 credit in there, which I have no idea how that went up, went from $2,500. Um, so now I'm just waiting to, with that bill and. Uh, at the moment, it's, shall we say, settled. But I don't, again, with trust and so on, like everybody else, it's over. I have no trust at all in the system at all. It's, it's kind of a, it's a joke, and it's on us. So uh, that's it for me. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Joe Latini. I'm here tonight with my wife, Sherry. We both live in Sorgades on Partition Street. We have an old Victorian. So it unfortunately tends to be a uh, problem to get the heat in it. Most years we burn coal in the house. And burning, even burning coal, my central Hudson bill has always been exceptionally high. This particular year, the bill went in January from $500 to $1,200 in February, then to a negative in this past month, and now I'm up over $3,000. The problem I have is all my bills that have been coming in from Central Hudson have been actual, not actual bills, but they have been estimated bills coming from them. So how do you know exactly what you're paying for? You don't. The problem I had with Central Hudson two years ago, 
They moved my meter from inside the house because they didn't want to take the postcards anymore and put them out. And they put it to the outside of the house. They're still not reading it, even though they told me that the meter could be read from the street. Now, I've had electric meters on the side of my house for well over 40 years that I've lived there. And again, they're not reading the electric meters, they're estimating the bills. So in between this mess that has occurred this year, I called the Public Service Commission up in Albany. The unfortunate part about it is, they were berating me that they had no responsibility. Now I'm hearing- 30 seconds. Locally here from the politicians that the Public Service Commission is gonna get involved in this. So far I haven't seen nothing. So when these Public Service Commission people were telling me that it's my problem, they don't, they're not responsible for uh, Central Hudson's rate increases, I have a major problem with that because they're the ones appointed to do the rate increases. That's a problem. And that's all I got. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, James Riker and Mark Riker, please come up to the microphones. And then to my right, please. Test Hello, them. I'm Judith Finette and I live in Lake Katrine. And on June 1st, I moved from a 3,500 square foot house to a 1,457 square foot house, which is an electric house. And through the winter, I've kept all but two rooms off. I'm a low energy user, as the lady before me. I was billed from August to February, bills of $34, $87, $62. And when I got my bill in February, it was $2,300. And I called them and they said, well, you know, we didn't do any meter readings until that time. I said, well, I want you to go back and calculate a bill for each month because I know what you've done. You've gone ahead and charged me the overage at the new higher rate. And they said, oh, you're absolutely right. We'll, re we'll redo that bill. So I got a new bill, six bills for every month, came out with the same number at the end. So the, the rate charges are out of control. But the thing I want to tell you tonight that's the most egregious thing that happened to me, one of the several times I was on the phone with Central Hudson for an hour or more, I was done talking to a service representative and she said, would you like to be connected to the survey? I said, oh yes, give me the survey. So the, uh, the phone rings and a voice comes on and says, this is Joe Smith, leave me a message. So I left my name and number and said, I'm an unhappy customer, please call me back. An hour later, a woman from Stone Ridge calls me. She said, I'm Mrs. Joe Smith, and my husband's an attorney here, and how did you get our number? I said, I didn't get your number. Central Hudson told seconds. me they were connecting me to the survey. So in the, in the medical community, this would be a HIPAA violation, extreme. I don't know how they connected me to a private person's telephone number to leave a message about my complaint. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, Michael and Pamela Olson, if you could come to the microphone on my right, please. Yeah. My name is Noelle Damon. I'm from the town of Rosendale. I've submitted my comment um, with details about my bill online, so I'm just gonna speak to the general issue here of how difficult it is for all of us to be dealing with a, a utility company that we have to hold accountable and we have to be able to make our, our bills work for them. We are doing the work for them and how many people are out there who can't do this. And if, you, if I didn't have the wherewithal to catch the errors of exponential billing increases, which got my bill from two kilowatt hours to 1,822 um, kilowatt hours. Uh, this, I, if I didn't have the wherewithal to deal with that, I, I would be, um, this would be a, a predatory, and it is, this is predatory billing. And, and there are too many people out there who are suffering from this and who are disadvantaged by the fact that they don't even know to question because there are too many people who don't question authority and, you, and this utility company is an authority in our lives and, and as a result, people are paying and who, how are they going to be paid? That's what I'd like to know. How are they going to be paid back? How are we all going to be paid back for these egregious errors? 
during COVID, we understand that there's been an, an increase in ineptitude on corporations. And, and I do not hold the customer service people responsible. It is the responsibility of the corporation to be able to practice proper business and ethical business practices so that we can put our trust in a, into a utility that we have to depend on. And it is criminal that we cannot depend on them, but that they are stealing from us. Thank you very much for your testimony. Again, I'll ask for Michael and Pamela Olson. I'm also going to ask for Maureen Wong. Uh, Jim Riker from uh, Town of Esopus. Uh, we really need uh, billing, uh, correct billing, reading of the meters every month. Um, they, uh, they're not reading them, they're not doing the correct addresses when they do read them. And, uh, you know, you have uh, the Kingston Freeman, the guy delivers the letters to the correct address every day, every seven days a week. The pizza guy can deliver pizza to the correct address, but these guys can't read the meter, uh, you know, once a month. It's nuts. Anyway, uh, and it, we all have this billing problem with they're charging too much, of course. I, every, I hear all of it. Okay, that's it. Thank you for your time. Diana Lopez, please come to the microphone. Diana Lopez. Okay, sir, you're up. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mark Riker. Uh, I was hired by Frank Koenig in 1975 uh, as building inspector. I was a city official for 40 years. I retired in 2015. The first 20 years I worked out of City Hall, and the last 20 years I worked out of the fire department. And I'm responsible for putting the meters in your houses. And I can tell you, uh, when we installed meters, we enforced the codes, rules, and regulations. I have a little book that I, this is probably the third book, I could call Central Hudson, I could call the electrical inspector, and I can guarantee you what you have in your house in the city of Kingston is up to codes, and, and, and uh, not only up to codes, Central Hudson used to work with me personally, and, and we made sure everything was done right to the stuff. But the problem is right now is, is you have a new organization that's taken over, and what they've done, uh, it's financial, and it's not working. It's an experiment maybe they're doing, I don't know, but it's not working. Now, I'm a landlord since 1960s. Uh, my my uh, electric bill used to be between $1,500 and uh, $2,500. I got a $6,000 bill sitting on my desk here now. You call them up and you get blown off by Central Hudson. Uh, the new group, it's got to be checked on. You better find out where their money's going, or where it's coming from. And the Public Service Commission uh, has to do something because it's, it's uh, totally out of control. And, and uh, I have no answers, but I tell you, if you want a meter reader, you can get one. You, out west, they have houses and meters 40 miles, 50 miles apart, and they read the meters. They know uh, you, you, technology is here. You can read meters. Okay, thank you very much for your time, sir. And if you want help, I'll tell you how to fix it. Good evening. Uh, my name is Diana Lopez. I'm a resident of Kingston, and I am here as well as many others. Uh, I received several bills. Um, I received two bills in one week, uh, one of $2,000, one of $3,000, and just recently, I checked the account, and I owe $4,000. Um, so I know that we, um, of course, I, for me, the solution is getting rid of Central Hudson, right? We need a public option, like many have said. Um, and in order for that to happen, we need our elected officials to really stand up, um, represent us, and uh, really support 
what is um, in in both um, Assembly and Senate, the Build, uh, Build Public Power Act. Um, and I don't know, like I lose trust in the elected official, especially when I know that, you know, um, Central Hudson has been given money to their re-election campaign. Um, so I don't know how, you know, they're gonna help fix this problem if they are receiving money from Central Hudson. Um, that's a question I have, and I did my research. So I think that, you know, us all here, let's um, tell our neighbors about this act, uh, uh, Bill Public uh, Renewals Act, you know, call our elected officials. They're not, they're saying like, yes, we'll help, uh, but we know that that's not gonna happen because again, you know, they, they receive money, so. Um, yeah, what is the next option? Um, we need them to really represent us. We're all here together, right? Having the same issue, and I'm pretty sure they are too. But we, re we need action, and we need it now. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, Deepak Patel, Patrick Conway, Gloria Waslin, and Kevin Tompkins. Whichever microphones are closer, step up, sir, you can start. Good evening, Patrick Conway, County Rochester. Case number 230351. State of New York already called in, but still waiting and waiting, such as when this all started back in July of last year. What piece of property in that court been a resident there for a while, moved up to the North Country National Grid, $27 a month for a belt very large home. Well, I moved back down here and purchased a piece of property. Within a short period of time of August last year, they started renovating or doing something next door, taking trees out. Next thing I know it, they have dug on my property from here to the center stage and hooked up an electric line hanging on my pole. I called and asked and they said, uh, we, we don't know nothing. A guy, gentleman, came to my house with a tag on, and he says, here's a contract I need you to sign that it is permission to come on your property. I said, you already have, and you destroyed it. I said, the water runs this way, that way, every other way. Uh, I called back, and every, all the experiences of the building, and every, it's all there. It's just, it's beyond. All I got to say, 230351 is my case number in the state of New York, and I hope our politicians here step up to the plate and knock them home. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Christine Tompkins and Michael Platsky. And to my left, please. My name is Gloria Watson. And it's a complicated story. I mean, I've got the same story everybody else has with billing, but I'm not going to focus on that. Um, I'm on fixed income, so it's a big issue. I have parrots. And in the last ice storm, which wasn't that far back, um, a friend of mine was concerned about the parrots. It was only 50 degrees inside. It was fine. They were okay. But they knocked on, the, the police were called, right? Because they were at risk for however many days would be. They went to my neighbor's house, the police did, and was looking for, you know, whatever. The concept of the fright caused my neighbor, who was very pregnant, to have very high blood pressure and need to get um, an immediate um, delivery. And the poor baby was suctioned out, and, and they were almost both dead. The husband, who's my neighbor, was concerned about his wife dying, concerned about the baby dying. And I just, I just think that there are so many more layers to the issues with Central Hudson and their irresponsibility. And I'm not talking about ice storms, that happens, right? But the irresponsibility of the billing because it puts people into a very high stress state. Myself, my neighbors, and there are implications of that that we're not talking about. We're talking about money, but it also has to do with how stressed people get and how that can impact their health. 
So thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Dante Martin, you can come up for the microphone. And to my right, please. Thank you. Uh, my name is Kevin Tompkins. I live here in Kingston. Um, I just recently retired from the post office, and uh, my bill since I've been retired has gone from a couple hundred dollars a month to, you know, thousands. And I um, just hope my wife's not blaming me because I'm home more that my bill went up as high as it did. Um, the, hope, the other thing that I want to say, too, is that, you know, there's a lot of people here, a lot of people that didn't come that would have come or would like to have come but didn't. Um, and so this problem has been festering for a long time, more than just tonight or the last week or the last month. It's been for months. And I'm hoping the politicians aren't being reactive rather than proactive. Because that's what it seems to be, because it has been a problem for so long. I have two elderly parents who live in Poughkeepsie. They were told when their bill went to $2,000, and they, my mother paid it. And they said that the check bounced, which it didn't bounce. It was that their system couldn't handle the amount of numbers in their, in their account, which was unbelievable to me. I couldn't understand it. Still don't understand it. But anyway. She hasn't paid it, and she can't pay it. But uh, you know, it has to. We have to be proactive at this. We have to make sure that the Public Service Commission does what they're supposed to do, and that's the, they should set the rates, or we should go public. We definitely need to go public because at least we know there's accountability. Um, so, thirty seconds. Okay, um, that seems to be where it should go because at least when it's uh, when somebody's held accountable for it, I'm hoping that. These criminals in the Central Hudson mm -hmm. go to jail. And that's up to the politicians and through their investigations for that to happen. And I'm just hoping that something comes out positive with this for all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. My name is Dante Martin. I live in Kingston. Um, I first became aware of our electrical problem concerning the bills via my wife who showed me that we had gotten two bills within a week. We paid what we expected to be November's bill, and then the bill that followed it is what they applied it to. So I started making calls to Central Hudson's computer, or uh, customer service people. I went through about 20 of them, never getting the same one twice. And all I got was pat answers and guesses and a lot of confusion. We have since been receiving autonomous bills that are just absolutely ridiculous. So my message is this, given I don't think it's an, an accident, I think it's intentional, stop the pirate billing and stop the nonsense. Thank you very much. I do have a name on here, uh, it's actually the same address as yours, sir. Uh, if that individual wants to come up, I just can't really get this name out. Maybe it's Kevin Fra Frahans or Frahans. Uh, also, Jen Muse. Please come up. Hi, my name is Christine Tompkins. I live in Kingston. Uh, my husband was just up here talking. Um, I just wanted to say that our bill went from like $400 budget month, and we usually get our budget month in December, so it's usually overpaid at $400 a month. So when January didn't came around and we didn't get billed, I was thinking, oh, it's just overpaid. So we'll get a bill in February. Well, I didn't get a bill in February. So then I called, my husband called, and we got wound up getting four bills, totaling $3,691.76. I was stunned, I couldn't believe it. I was like, how could this possibly be? <laughs> then we got another bill, notification in my text message a couple weeks ago, and now they're saying I owe $4,284.28. We never even used power like this before. It's just, I don't even understand it. Um, they did estimate our bills from probably November all the way up until now, and then that's when they billed us. So I feel that they're billing us for all our usage this winter for the higher rate, and that's totally unfair. That's why I design. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe Khan, Patty, and Vincent Gutman. Go ahead, sir, to my right. My name is Michael Platsky. I live in Woodstock, New York. I'll try to be fast and brief. My billing story is similar to everyone else's. 
I got a thousand dollar bill. I called and complained. They said, big mistake, we'll rectify that. Three days later, I get a bill for 750, which is double the highest bill I ever had. Followed three days after that with a bill for $1,500. So within like 10 days, I got a bill for 1,000, a bill for 750, and a bill for 1,500. I would also like people to stop referring to these people as Central Hudson. It's Fortis International. Central Hudson is just a little puppet they have in their pocket. This company is in Western Canada and could care less about us. Um, the, the time for electric to be delivered by corporations whose main concern is making their stockholders money has to come to an end. This is a public service and it should be run by the public or by the state and get the profit margin out of it. What company that needs natural gas doesn't buy it in advance at a lock-in price? It's absurd. Um, also like to mention that I tried to file a complaint online with the Public Service Commission. It kept rejecting my phone number that I've had for 12 years as invalid and wouldn't allow me to submit the complaint. Then I tried to call which was a waste of time because no one answered or the line went dead. I'm grateful to Kevin Mayfield's office who have helped me. I think they filed the complaint for me. I'll check with them because I still don't have a number, a case number. But, uh, and also I'd like to mention anyone who's still on auto pay, you must be dizzy. You've got to get off auto pay. I have a feeling Fortis looked at how many people are on auto pay and just started throwing these bills out Thank that you are three much, times sir. what they should be. Time is up. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Again, uh, Patty and Vincent Gutman. How about Laura Ross and Mark Matt, or not? Hi, I'm uh, Jem Muse with Stuff. And uh, the gentleman before me just took all of the wind out of my sails here. Canada, oh Canada. I'm not moving up there anytime soon. <laughs> but I'm, I do agree we have to go public. I mean, between Spectre and Central Hudson, I may have to go to therapy soon. Um, I'm disabled and uh, I do rely on some medical equipment. And um, I went through a time where they always called me to tell me that when a storm was coming, which was comforting, like, go find someplace else to go um, if you need any electricity. And um, I, the hours I have spent on hold just to be disconnected and have to call back again, the frustration of not getting bills resolved, I just went from a normal $200 monthly bill during the winter months for additional electric heaters to $1,000 this last month. The every other month meter reading is ludicrous. So I take uh, photographs of my meters. I have two, unfortunately. So I get double delivery charges, which when you look at your bill, you'll be amazed if you look at your bill. Um, I can't believe how high the delivery charges are. And they, I can't afford, because I'm on a fixed income, to get my meters combined to, to one. So I've, I suffer with that. And the, the only advantage to being disabled is they can't shut me off legally um, because I'm protected that way. But um, it's just really sorrowful. I'm, and I do uh, email my meter readings on the off months. And they don't, 30 seconds, ma'am. Thank you. They don't uh, count it as an actual reading, and I don't know why. And I'd just like to say this past February, when we had that big ice storm, I, for the first time in all my years, and I wasn't born yesterday, um, I actually saw the meter reader come to my house during an ice storm. I was shocked. Like, he walked by my kitchen window, because I didn't think they actually existed. I thought they were like little fairies that came down. 
than maybe then, because it's never accurate. So I, let's go public. Please, people, do not do automatic deduction out of your bank account. They are thieves, and they will take money you don't even have out, and then you'll be at a deficit, and all your bank money too. So yes, our public officials, please help us. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Again, uh, Lori Ross or Mark Knott. Chandranika Gills. Irene Brown. We got Karen Keith. And uh, Catherine Yalakis. To my right, you can start now. Hi, I'm Lynn Brown from Allenville. I made a lot of changes from last year because my electric bill was too high and a lot of personal sacrifices. So I got it down and my January bill was 144, which was about normal. My February bill was $668. So I called Central Hudson and I actually spoke to a customer service rep who said that she noticed a possible error and she would have a supervisor call me. And um, the supervisor called me back and she blew me off and said that um, customer service reps didn't know anything and there was no error in my bill. And I tried to explain to her there was no possible way that I used $668 worth of electric. Um, Again, I have no television, no internet. I unplug every appliance. I bubble wrap my windows. I have LED lights everywhere. I work 14 hours a day. I go away on weekends to my daughter's house. I did not use $668 worth of electric. Um, she told me, well, you know, her rates went up to her bill was $700. She put her heat at 60 and threw an extra blanket on the bed. I said, lady, I don't have the heat on in my house. It's on 45 in the basement so the pipes don't freeze. I sleep with four blankets and three layers of clothes. There's a big difference. I did not use $668 worth of electric. And she told me it was a consumption reading and that I was lucky because the rates were going to be twice as much. 20 seconds. You know, they warned us that there was going to be a 40% increase. $668 is over a 200% increase. They just can't bully us like that. It, it's just ridiculous. And that's just completely unheard of, that they could raise prices 250% and we're just supposed to live with it. It's criminal. It is criminal Thank that you, corporate gets rich off of the backs of people. Thank you, ma'am. Your time is up. Thank you. Hi. Um, I'm not going to bog everyone down with the details that we all have heard and we all know. Can I get your name? Oh, yes. Yeah, Chandranika. Chandranika Gills. Live in a round out area. I've lived there for three years. Never really had a problem with, electric with electricity or gas. Roommates move out. All the bills went in my name. Three months later, I received the gas bill for $1,100. Um, at a commercial rate at that. My um, three bedroom apartment that I shared with two roommates was suddenly a commercial building. Um, but again, I won't bog, you got, bog anyone down with the details. Obviously I didn't pay that because someone said $6,000 is what we have in our account. I'm 26, I don't have $6,000 yet. Um, my message is to the elected officials who are investigating on behalf of the community, of the people. Um, not the city, not the county, on behalf of the people and our real experiences. How are you going to hold this company accountable? How? We need, we need our money back. 
we need to be able to live. We need to be able to pay our bills without worrying, worrying that we are being scammed. We have enough to worry about in this country <laughs> to be scammed of. How are you going to hold this company accountable? What is this investigation going to lead to? And like someone says, like it's not just Central Hudson, it's this whole other entity. So are you going to stop when they give you, you know, whatever computer documents, I don't know what the language is, but you know, like this is not just a computer error. This is not just some huge coincidence where thousands of people have the same story. So how are you going to hold this company accountable? And how are you going to serve the people that elected you to do this? Because if you don't, the people are gonna take back the power. And contrary to popular belief, when people take back the power, things get done. Thank, so. you. Thank you very much. And just a reminder, if uh, anyone has any further or additional questions, we do have staff here from our elected officials that you can meet with in the back of the room. So thank you very much. I am gonna try calling up a couple other people too. Karen, Keith, I'm here. Catherine, Yalikis, Rashida, Tyler. Hi, everyone. to my right. Yeah, hi everyone. Catherine Bailakis, Saugerties, New York. Um, my story is not any different than everyone else who has spoken, and there's an overwhelming feeling of helplessness. We don't, what choices do we have? It's not like Central Hudson, and you can go here, or you can go there. What is the end game here? Do they want people to be homeless, bankrupt? Where, where are they, where is this leading to? Um, I've called them several times. They basically gaslight me, you know? Um, you need a forensic electrician to prove your case. Um, it's always the same story. So um, I'm feeling that we need to do a class action suit. Yeah. Yes. And gather as one voice, have forensic electricians go to everyone, get the facts, and have people be reimbursed. And just like the lady who spoke a few minutes ago regarding, it's not just about money, it's people's lives. The stress level can bring them to the hospital and worse. And who's gonna stand up for the people? Who's standing up for us? Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Daniel Woodham. Emily Snydel, or Seidel. Chris Militori. And Robin Hayes. Uh, my name's Karen Keefe. I live downtown on Spring Street. I bought my house in 97. It was very cheap. Um, it was after IBM left. Um, and, or I never would have been able to buy a house if it wasn't. And, um, and I've never had, uh, I've never had problems with Central Hudson until now. I've been annoyed and pissed off at them for various things, like the estimated bills that, that are always out, out of whack so that the one in the, the, the bill in the middle that I have to pay, I mean, that's the actual thing, is always very high. You know, so every, every other month I've had to pay more than I was comfortable with because they, the way they estimate is like so far off. But that's the only thing that bothered me before now. I've always paid my bill um, by calling, not a person, calling their, their pay line and uh, doing it over the phone, and I've never had a problem with that until the first bill right after this happened um, was the first time I wasn't able to, and they acted like, um, we have no record of your phone number. I've had the phone number for all the years I've lived in this house, and um, we have no record of your phone number, blah, blah, blah. And um, it turned out that they had done something Oh, they had changed your account number, and so they didn't, they couldn't figure out um, who I was, I guess, when I was calling after 20-some years. Um, 
I now have a $3,000 unpaid bill. Um, I've always, that's natural gas because I live in Kingston. That's the hard, that's the high part of it. And um, um, oh, sorry, what was my train? That's of okay, you've got tw 20 seconds, man. <laughs> um, so I just, I mean, when I, when I started reading, like there's this big problem, I just stopped paying because um, they said they weren't going to turn people off. And now my bill's three thousand dollars, and uh, I don't do all this adding and, and subtracting and figuring out at my bill because I've never had the the cause to do it before. But you can, I'll tell you this: I'm going to go home and do all that um, work that I've, I've heard right. people talking about. Thank you thank very you. much, ma'am. If you have more concerns, I can take it to the back. But thank you very much. Hey, how you doing? My name is Chris Militari. Uh, I live in West Philly, New York. I moved up here a few years ago. Isn't unregulated capitalism great? <laughs> it's just great, isn't it? That Central Huston is now partnered with, with Do We Cheat Them and How as their accounting firm. Uh, it's just phenomenal. Um, and uh, I think I'm highly insulted. I mean, my story is exactly the same as everyone else's. $220 bill, a dollar bill. $2,000 bill. Yeah, that's not 45%, at least the, the math I studied. Um, the insult is on the television commercials. Well, here's the reason for your, 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 your rates going up. Um, first off, it's cold. Really? It's actually cold? I mean, this is what happens in the winter up here in upstate New York? Oh, oh okay. Then the other thing is that, well, Indian Point has closed. Indian Point has been disengaged for three years or four years. That thing is just there, just basically to store spent nuclear fuel. It's been operating at 5% for years now because they've been too afraid to turn it on because there will be nothing left of Westchester, New York City, so on and so forth. So. I mean, how insulting is that to the people who work every day, who have to count their pennies? And I'm one of them. You know, you know. And I love that. I love the concept. And thank you for that information, whoever the person was who told us the real parent company of Central Hudson, mm -hmm. Fortis. Thirty okay. seconds. Thanks. A Canadian firm. My God. If we don't do something as a community, as a county, as an area of New York State, then shame on us. Then we got nobody to blame. If you keep electing people who want to promote more unregulated capitalism, ooh, the dirty word, unregulated capitalism, then you will be screwed on a regular basis. All right. So make your decision. Yeah, thank you, sir. Hi, my name is Robin Hayes, and I live in Gardner. And on September 3rd of last year, my bank account was suddenly overdrawn. And I was very surprised by this. I was, at that time, on auto pay for my electric bill. And I only have electric with Central Hudson because I have oil heat and whatnot. Anyway, I went, whoa, and I looked, and my separate metered garage, which has never been more than $40, uh, there was a charge for $2,070. So I spent, and I logged it, 37 hours trying to get it resolved between being on hold and talking to various people and being told I'd get a call back from a supervisor and didn't, so I'd call. Anyway, it was 37 hours later. Um, I did get a supervisor who told me that I would be refunded, and of course that was in, incorrect. So then she called me, and I wasn't getting refunded, and she said, it turns out our system can't handle refunding you the entire $2,000 at one time. We have to divide it into $500 payments per week plus a $70 payment. So over five weeks, I received my $2,070 back. Great. 
I was in the hole for a lot of hours, but okay. Then somehow their accounting system read those return those credits to me as a bounce checks of mine because I had been billed this amount and then it had been returned. So somehow their accounting system thinks I bounced five checks because all those amounts were returned to me. So they're charging me all that money over again plus five overdraft fees. So this was not, I've never messed a check in Central Just Hudson. 30 seconds. Okay. Um, anyway, I am trying to resolve that and no one ever calls me back. I talk to customer service. They say they're going to escalate it to a supervisor. No one ever calls me back. It's like just nothing and it feels abusive and I need a left drunk. And that's the end of my story. Well, did you have any additional comments or did you want any assistance from one of the um, senator staff? I would love assistance. Okay. So I, I asked Wendy, she'll meet with you in the back corner. Okay, thank you. And again, that assistance is available to everybody. If you want additional time or additional questions or have additional concerns, that's what they're here for. All right, again, Daniel Wood, Daniel Woodham, uh, Emily Seidel, David Sosa, Jeff Collins, Hi, I'm Stephanie Kresser. I don't have a story that's any different than what we've heard. I think on April or March 23rd, my bill was $926. And then on April 17th, it was $3,209. Um, but I think what I really want to get on record is that as a therapist in the community, I think that our elected officials really need to stand up for our seniors and our people on disability because this has been truly mentally anguish, just mental anguish for them where their co-payments of coming to see therapists like me or those who had to privately pay to see therapists like me because of the heartache and the mental stress that this has put on them has been overwhelming. The time, the money, so I don't think it's just about this crazy, insane billing, but the impact that it has had on our most vulnerable population, our seniors, and I just think that really needs to be said. Thank you very much for that. Nicole Interante. If you're here, please come to the mic. And then to my right, please provide testimony. My name is Jenny Bates. Good evening. Um, I'm a resident of Uptown Kingston. I'm a and I really am wondering what Mr. Cahill is going to say when he hears these stories. Do we, does he really need to hear more sets of numbers that make absolutely no sense whatsoever? And I really give a lot of credit to people who've taken the time to actually figure it out and go through and add up and subtract and do all that. I, I couldn't do that with the bills that I've had that have been so all over the place. You know, if I had a calculator in my hand and I plugged in two plus two and it came back 99, I'd say, oh, okay, let me, let me try again. And I put in two plus two and it came back minus 137. I begin to think something was wrong. It's absolutely unconscionable that these numbers have been going out week after week, month after month to disabled, disenfranchised, poor, unemployed, and employ people, and we can't make sense of it. None of us want to go into debt, and we can't help but go into debt because we can't pay these amounts. Who is accountable? How are we going to get this fixed? I don't want another day of non-action on this. It's unconscionable. We need action, and I support anybody who wants to take this company over and make this a public-owned Utility, yes, let's go for it. There's no other way we can work this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. Hello, my name is 
Nicole Tarante. I'm a resident of Kingston. Um, we've owned a house downtown for about 10 years. So this is just four of our last bills. Uh, December, 1400. January, 2200. March, 4400. May, 6200. So $6,000. And they're saying that gas uh, delivery increases by 50%, 45%, and then a month later the delivery charge is increasing by another 50% again. It's the same story as everyone else. Where do we get the money? Food is going up, gas is outrageous. I don't think that providing the gas, the gas supply, and then the gas delivery, like $500 to get the gas delivered, all of it is corruption. We all know this. I, I just don't know where the young, fearless leaders are. I don't have the answers. I know that none of us do, but something's got to give. The corruption in this country is just out of control. Thank you for doing something. Let's keep going. Okay, everyone. Um, did get through the list of the yeses. And as I said, there were a lot of blank spots. So is there anybody in the crowd that still feels compelled to, to provide testimony? If you could raise your hand. Uh, come on up, sir. Anybody else? And as I said before, we still have staff here from uh, New York State Senator's Office and the New York State Assemblyman's Office. So if you have additional questions, something else to look into, please don't hesitate to talk to them. They're in the back of the room here. And uh, I wanna say again, thank you very much for being very respectful uh, in your testimony this evening and your comments. My name's Steven Spinelli. Uh, I live a couple blocks over own my house. It's insanity, to say the least. I've never been in so much credit card debt in my entire life. Never been hung up on so much in my entire life. In the same day. Um, same story, 100%, 200%, 300%, 350% 300 increase. But uh, <laughs> the one conversation I had with one of the service reps was, um, he informed me I could get an in investigation from Central Hudson. So I said, okay, let's do that. And he said, well, your, your circumstance doesn't really fit the bill. You know, my supervisor's gonna say no. And I asked him, what's the metric? You know, there has to be a tolerance of some sort that I meet. And he said, well, if you have consecutive months where your bill is much higher, you know, we'll give you an investigation. I said, okay. I have that. And he goes, well, you know, last month it was below your normal, but the month before that was 400% higher, but the month before that was my normal. And I said, well, how many, how many months do I have to have? And he goes, well, at least three. And I was like, so you're just going to play a game where one month is okay and one month's not. So I get no investigation. He goes, well, that's not really up to me. So, you know, just a little insight that everyone else knows about, because what the fuck is going on? <laughs> I don't understand it. It's fucking criminal. Is, is that a control? You know, public service. You're stealing my money and you're giving me stress. I don't know about all of you, but I got two lifelong incurable diseases, and this is not helping, like, at all. I've never been to the doctor so much in the last three months. It's crazy. And I'm sorry to hear all your stories also. It ain't right. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Is there anyone else uh, who would like to speak again? All of your comments made tonight will be submitted to the Department of Public Service, included on matter 22-00666 for the Public Service Commission investigation. That appears, to, well, we have one more gentleman who'd like to speak. I've been in and out of this thing because I had another meeting. Come on up, sir. I, I don't know what to speak most of the time. I just want to make my comment. Sure. Uh, 
My name is Michael Manji. I live in Poughkeepsie, New York. I heard about this meeting last minute and came here to try and be part of it, but I had another meeting and I'm in and out. So basically, um, my, my power bill was a fixed thing and I was paying $211 a month and at the end of the year they basically adjusted it and it would be an extra two, three hundred. Well, just now, I got a bill for $1,400 and they raised me to 300, which I guess is still not bad for a lot of people, but I, I've had a stroke and I don't do much in the house. I watch TV with no lights on, my washer and dryer have died. I don't do much of anything. I don't use electricity. How the hell it's going up that much, I have no idea. And I'm on medical equipment to help me breathe. And I've already written to the doctor to send Central Hudson uh, in a, a letter to explain to them that they really can't shut me off because I would die. So um, I don't know what's going to happen here overall. I hope that, I, again, I missed most of it. I'm sorry. But uh, I hope that this comes to some fruition and we get something done because this is terrible. So that's all I got to say. There isn't anyone else. Uh, thank you all for your time and your compelling stories. And as I stated a couple times, your testimony will be you know, taken down. It's been recorded multiple ways. And it's going to be part of the investigation going forward from the elected officials that were here this evening. Um, if you have any other questions or if you do want to ask a couple questions on the way out to uh, anyone at the front tables there, you know, feel free to just stop and ask that question. Okay. Again, thank you all very much for your time.